Welcome to our latest webinar for corporates. In this series, we'll be examining recent events and looking ahead at what might be in store for financial markets and the economy. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the February edition of the FX webinar. And well, it's been a very interesting few weeks since the last webinar in terms of the ups and downs in the markets and uh, and also the pricing and then repricing of risks uh, regarding interest rate rises coming over the coming weeks and months. So uh, without uh, uh, going into any further detail, I'll just run you through uh, the summary slide of um, of the contents of this presentation. So we're going to be looking again at inflation. Inflation, uh, I think, has been a key standout factor with regard to why central banks are pricing in significant monetary tightening. We'll then look at some of the risks to economic activity uh, with the new forecasts that we've seen out of the IMF, um, downward revisions for 2022 growth, noteworthy, um, sizable downworthy revisions, uh, uh, downward revisions for growth in the US. And so we'll then look at what that potentially means um, not for central bank decisions in the short term, but in the medium to longer term, uh, before turning our attention to labour markets, where we've seen them continuing to cause some struggles, at least in terms of staffing uh, for vacancies, before turning our attention to the FX markets and, and where the risks potentially lie with regard to FX over the remainder of 2022. So let's get straight into it and look at inflation first. So this next slide uh, looks at several uh, different elements here. So we've got energy price inflation, as indicated by the price of Brent crude. We've got underlying commodity price inflation, as evidenced by the CRB index. And then we've got what's happening in headline inflation rates in the UK, the US, and in Euroland. And in fact, we've had more data out this morning from Euroland, which shows Euroland headline inflation at a record high at 5.1%. Um, so some material further increases in headline inflation rates, and to an extent as well, a quite sizable increase in core inflation rates as well. And it, it's the noteworthy secondary element of this, the rising core inflation rates in the, the UK, US and Euroland that I think is creating the greatest trouble for central banks. If this was just related to energy or indeed if it was some short-term effects of supply chain disruption, then I think they'd be relatively relaxed about the uh, the, the threat of um, uh, the inflation that they're seeing. But instead, what we're seeing is a more persistent upward trend in inflation, one that's going to get a lot worse in the UK over the coming months because of the rise in the energy price cap uh, that's due in April time. So in the April figures, uh, we're going to see a sizable jump in headline inflation rates for the UK. Um, but that may then bake itself into higher wage demands uh, equally. So those arguing for significant hikes in interest rates are inflation being more persistent. Um, but I, I do think that central banks still anticipate and, and forecasting bodies generally still anticipate quite a swift collapse in headline inflation rates into 2023. Um, the question marks over higher commodity prices, higher energy prices, and their influence on labour markets, we'll see a little bit later um, that it's it's the problems of filling vacancies that is creating the, the, the bulk of wage inflation thus far. We haven't seen wage inflation uh, being boosted more generally by higher levels of people quitting. Uh, but I think that that will start to steadily creep into domestic inflation rates over the course of coming month. So moving on to the next slide, we'll look at the risks to growth. These are the IMS figures and, and on the right-hand table, this is the change from the October 2021 forecast to the, uh, the January 2022 forecast, which is the table on the left. So there wasn't much by way of material change to the 2021 outturns that are expected, but for 2022, the numbers are expected uh, much lower. So US growth much weaker than previously predicted, down 1.2 percentage points from the 
uh, October forecast. Similarly, weak growth outturns for Euroland in the UK, but not as severe uh, a downgrade in forecast uh, opinions and uh, and expectations there. Uh, globally, uh, growth off around about 0.5%. Worthwhile mentioning just how weak Chinese growth is seen in 2022. Now, that may be... Not, uh, due to a number of factors, but I think undoubtedly it's down to higher levels of leverage in China, particularly corporate leverage, which could create some significant problems as far as business investment over the course of 2022 and beyond. And, and, and therefore, I think will be a significant net drag on economic activity in China, not just for 2022, but equally into 2023. One other factor in terms of risks to uh, to growth is that we will be seeing some fiscal tightening or at least not the same fiscal boosts that we saw in 2021 in a lot of those major economies and those headwinds could be more significant than the markets and the, and, and the likes of the IMF are pricing for. So you do have this high inflation environment, at least in the short term, coupled with a weaker growth environment. And it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as far as FX market opinions are concerned. So moving on and looking at uh, the next slide, this uh, shows, well, the first thing it shows actually was the surprise rate rise from the uh, Bank of England in December. Um, it doesn't show the predictions of where rates are going over the course of 2022, but the expected path of interest rates for the US and the UK is a sustained period of tightening from both the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England. In the US, five rate rises are expected by NatWest markets. In the UK, only a further two rate increases are expected with the possibility of a third, whereas the markets for the US and the UK expect five and four rate increases respectively. And there has been some speculation that the US might raise interest rates in March by 50 basis points. I think by by jumping and doing too much, you could actually panic markets rather than reassure them. And so the Federal Reserve have a, a tightrope to walk here with regard to what they do on monetary policy tightening. The same is not true of the European Central Bank. They're still sitting back and waiting to see just how long-lasting these inflationary effects are. And they're also mindful of the fact that for many economies, they've actually suffered a very sluggish period of economic activity into the end of the fourth quarter and the early part of the first quarter. So they will be concerned that if they were to tighten too quickly or signal a, a tightening too early, uh, then that might undermine growth expectations and in, in investment intentions over the course of 2022. The risks as far as uh, markets are concerned, and this is my view rather than just NatWest's view, is that there are fewer, both uh, from the US and the UK, fewer uh, rate increases than they are already currently priced for. And I think there are several factors at play here. Number one, being weak growth. Um, number two, being uh, weaker equity markets and, and weaker overall investment intentions. Uh, but also number three, the damage that's likely to be wrought to household incomes if you couple higher interest rates with the removal of fiscal stimulus. So I think central banks in the short term are likely wedded to those rate increases. But as we get further through 2022 and into 2023, we might see the markets actually having to price out some of the tightening that they currently have priced for. Uh, and one final, final point on this is that if we look back to 2018-2019, for the US, we, ha we have some track record here in terms of a central bank who was gearing up to make a significant series of monetary tightenings, but actually had to pull the plug on those because of an adverse reaction in the US economy. So there is some form here that if central banks do too much too quickly, uh, then they could cut the legs from, from out under the economic recovery. So moving on to the next slide. And looking at labour markets, you know, one of the factors that we expect to see boosting wage inflation and, and wage inflation generally, I think, is is too low given the tightness of labour markets. Remember, we're just coming out of the pandemic and unemployment rates are basically back where they were in the likes of the UK, the US and also Euroland. So 
that coupled with lower levels of economic migration from uh, employees in other economic jurisdictions seeking employment in in wealthier developed countries that that's been uh, another factor in terms of boosting job opening levels uh, and vacancies to virtually record highs. Um, and also, it's encouraging people to quit their jobs to seek better paid alternatives. So that's the right-hand chart here, the, jo- the jolts quit numbers uh, in the thousands. I mean, normally they'd be running at sort of sub uh, 3 million and they're now running at uh, just a shade under four and a half million. So there's been a significant increase in the number of people quitting jobs to take up better uh, better paid alternatives. And I think this is a trend that we will see replicated in the UK and also in Europe. Uh, ultimately, um, having been through such a uh, an enormous economic schism like the pandemic, it's made people less afraid of the unknown um, in terms of leaving one job to take up a new one. And employers have to be mindful of that. So I think you will see a, a, a significant hike in pay inflation and in average earnings growth over the course of 2022 and 2023, because this is not going to correct quickly, uh, given the number of vacancies that um, are being made available in uh, in the past few months, in fact, in the past sort of few quarters. So moving very quickly on to the final slide of, of the presentation, talking about FX markets, the forecasts haven't changed that much, but the risks are still very asymmetric uh, as far as sterling dollar is concerned and also sterling euro. I think there's more risks to the downside on these forecasts and also versus current rates than there is to the upside. The pound has demonstrated a Um, with regard to sustaining gains against the dollar and also to a lesser extent against the euro because I think that expectations of interest rate rises are um, are already to and also the terminal rate that UK interest rates are expected to reach, they all all look too high. And so I would expect to see some uh, short-term, short to medium-term pressure on sterling against the US dollar and also against the euro. Uh, we would mentioned previously about the fact that there's a bit more momentum for the, the euro in quarters two to four uh, as far as economic recovery is concerned. I would stick with that. I'd stick with that against both the US dollar and also against sterling uh, because I think that the, the European economy has uh, a uh, the best chance, it won't necessarily perform this way, but it has the best chance of outperforming current economic forecasts. Whereas for the US and the UK, I think the headwinds that are going to be generated from policies already announced um, are going to create problems at the back end of 2022 and into early 2023. So significant downside risks as far as sterling and the US dollar are concerned. We could see some some out outperformance of the euro just because of uh, underperformance of sterling and the US dollar. And then looking at some of the other currency pairs, it's noteworthy that we are still seeing very sizable increases in interest rates in emerging markets, particularly in Latin America, in parts of Eastern Europe. We saw it again last week. I think we'll get it again this week. Um, So it's not just the central bank meetings of the likes of the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of England that we should be focusing on. Things like the sharp increases in Brazilian rates or Mexican interest rates or uh, the uh, rates in some of the Eastern European countries, or even increases that we're starting to see in parts of Asia as well, uh, because of fears over the high level of headline global inflation, uh, I think may play out in some uh, greater volatility as far as emerging market currencies are concerned. So we went through a period where FX volatility was relatively low, albeit that quite a lot of that related to the major currencies. But I think we could be entering into a period where FX volatility is going to be considerably higher and considerably higher because um, of the the risks that they've overcooked it in terms of monetary tightening, um, not just from the developed world, but also from the emerging markets. So, that's the presentation. I think the downside risks, as, as the title of the uh, last slide suggests uh, to Sterling, are 
probably greater than other downside risks to other major currencies. There's the disclaimer, um, or there was the disclaimer that we normally present to you, just saying we're not offering you any advice. Thank you very much for dialing into this month's webinar. We hope you found the content enjoyable and informative. And so that's all for this month. We look forward to seeing you again at the next month's webinar. And thank you and goodbye for now.